Howdy everyone. Hope everyone's doing well out there. Today we're going to look at my favorite heavy metal albums. Um, I have many of them, of course, but I'm going to focus on my top five and I'm uh, just going to explore a little bit of why I think they have been so significant in terms of their contribution to the advancement of the genre of heavy metal and maybe some uh, personal memories that I have associated with each of them. Um, this is not a definitive review of every kind of heavy metal album in or every subgenre of heavy metal. These are ones that I simply find are my favorite and have had a meaningful impact in the advancement and development overall evolution of, of heavy metal. Um, what I'd like to do is show you the first one. I think that all of these are strong from start to finish, and that's why partly they're my favorite. Uh, they're very listenable all the way through. I don't skip tracks on them uh, too often, and um, uh, I think that they're, they're really solid bodies of work. And these are not in any order either. Um, First one is Black Sabbath's Paranoid from 1970, I believe. Uh, I really like this album. This was the second Black Sabbath album. I think it, it came out the same year as their first album, their self-titled debut. Uh, it, it helped in the overall creation of the genre of heavy metal. I love the doomy sound on it. Uh, the very groundbreaking riffs of Tony Iommi. I like Ozzy's vocals on it. Uh, it's a really fantastic album. I could probably have many candidates for favorite Black Sabbath album, uh, but I'm going to go with Paranoid uh, because it made such a strong contribution, I think, to heavy metal. Uh, Classic songs on here. I mean, Paranoid is uh, probably one of the most classic, if not their most classic song. Iron Man, that is a song I probably could do without hearing again. I've heard it so much through the years. Um, but I love Planet Caravan, Caravan because of the psychedelic, semi-acoustic, and jazzy nature of that song. That was a wonderful addition to their sound, which is something that they did do in their early days is throw in these kind of strange quasi psychedelic uh, quasi acoustic numbers too in their albums um, of course uh, hand of doom rat salad fairies wear boots are all spectacular maybe my favorite song on here is and always has been maybe always shall be electric funeral i love the doomy nature of, of the of the guitars in that song. I like Ozzy's voice in that song and the subject matter. Um, uh, overall, a fabulous, groundbreaking uh, album in heavy metal. Black Sabbath's Paranoid from 1970. Okay, And that was the only one of these five that I don't own on vinyl. These other four, I have uh, the vinyl copies of that I'm going to share with you today. Uh, so next is this wonderful gem, Iron Maiden's Seventh Son of a Seventh Son from 1988. This was a loose concept album, um, kind of addressing this uh, boy man who is a seventh son of a seventh son, and because of that, he has a myriad of magical powers um, and the album you can hear the different themes in the album around those subjects and uh, whether he's good or bad uh, or he's somewhere in between it's kind of up to you that's that's always never been exactly clear to me uh, but the sequencing of the songs on this from start to finish is fantastic um, and of course, there is the fabulous artwork on front and back covers. And one of my personal memories of this is that when I was 14 years old, 
Uh, I remember going to a mall in Bend, Oregon, not too terribly far from the town I grew up in, and my mom and I would go over there to this mall sometimes, and I would tell her, you know, you can go do shopping at some of these other stores. I want to go to this record store that was in the mall. And I would go to the record store, and I would uh, just hang out in the record store looking mostly at Iron Maiden albums <laughs> because I was so uh, en enthralled and mesmerized by the artwork of their albums, um, particularly this one, Seventh Son of a Seventh Son, and the one that came out before this, 1986, is somewhere in time. Uh, I would look at the artwork, be mesmerized by it, and look at, spend lots of time looking at the posters in the record store, of which they had a lot of Iron Maiden posters then as well. So, uh, a very important album for me, um, Iron Maiden, Seventh Son of Seventh Son. Favorite tracks, well, it opens with the spectacular Moon Child and then goes into uh, maybe my favorite song on the album, Infinite Dreams. Um, of course, you have Can I Play With Madness, probably their uh, hit single from this album at the time. The Evil at Mindu is fabulous. The title track, of course, is uh, amazing. Um, the, the Clairvoyant has been another favorite of mine. Only the Good Die Young uh, finishes up the album. Uh, all the songs are great very very strong piece of work okay uh, next I'm gonna go with Metallica's Master of Puppets from 1986 uh, the composition the arrangements the aggression on this album are are just uh, spectacular um, there is such incredible precision in the performances of all four members and uh, the album also sounds really good. Uh, the production is great. I think it has the perfect amount of reverb on it and that's one of the reasons why I like it a little more than maybe uh, Ride the Lightning which is I've heard many people's favorite Metallica album. Well of course you know, I think most people would probably choose one of their classic era uh, albums as their favorite, either Kill 'Em All, Ride the Lightning, Master of Puppets, or Injustice for All. Um, I think that Ride the Lightning and Injustice for All are strong candidates, but Master of Puppets is kind of the the pinnacle for them, where all those things I was mentioning earlier just came to this perfect uh, summit of excellence. And, of course, this was sadly the last album that was recorded with their original bass player. Actually, maybe second bass player, uh, if you want to get really technical about it, Cliff Burton, uh, who was tragically killed in a bus accident uh, in 1986 after this had been released. Uh, but anyway, Master of Puppets, uh, top tracks, Battery, how it begins with the acoustic classical guitar intro and then just into this crushing onslaught of metal riffage. The title track is a classic. Um, you know, everything on here is great and extremely enjoyable to listen to. I will say that uh, the track Sanitarium has long been a top favorite Metallica song of mine. And one of the reasons why I wanted to learn guitar in the first place, I just... Uh, was always impressed and mesmerized by the intro of that song, the arpeggiated acoustic, semi-acoustic intro with that wonderful solo by Kirk Hammett coming over that. Uh, I uh, wanted to uh, basically learn to play guitar, partly because I wanted to learn just that intro of that song, which I did, and later learn a lot more of the song on guitar. Uh, so that's personally uh, always has an uh, important place in my heart. Um, I don't know if you could say Metallica really uh, exceeded the brilliance that they 
they accomplished and achieved on Master of Puppets um, anywhere else. I know it's debatable, and, and um, uh, if you have differing opinions, I'd like to hear about them in, in your comments. Uh, moving on, I am going to also mention this great masterpiece of a heavy metal album, Slayer's 1986's Rain and Blood. Uh, the extreme tempos on here are uh, a bit brain rattling at times, but in a good way. Uh, they push the boundaries in terms of uh, extremities in their music, but it still retains musicality. There are many lacerating riffs and solos, and uh, I, I find that the album at only about 30 minutes or so uh, being that short packs a tremendous punch to the gut. It's a very efficient album. There is no blubber on this album whatsoever. Um, I was lucky to see Slayer once in January of 1995 here in Salem, Oregon, and it was such a wonderfully intense show, um, something I'll never forget, one of the favorite shows I've ever attended. Um, I really like the um, chemistry between, well, all the members, but I always was impressed with Jeff Hanneman and Kerry King's guitar chemistry, uh, their ability to come up with such furious, aggressive uh, riffs and solos is always so impressive, and this album takes it to probably the most e extreme that they ever, they ever did. I, I kind of struggle with what my favorite Slayer album is because I have a lot of appreciation and personal memories of ones that came out after this like Seasons in the Abyss and Divine Intervention but I think overall this is uh, uh, probably them at their most intense and uh, maybe, maybe their best. And then lastly is Deep Purple's In Rock from 1970. Uh, Deep Purple, along with Black Sabbath, created heavy metal, at least modern heavy metal, the way we think of it. Uh, I love this album from start to finish. The uh, in, incredible uh, energy from Richie Blackmore on guitar and Ian Gillen, who became their vocalist after Mark Evans departed from the band or was let go of the band, let go from the band. Uh, his vocals, Gillen's vocals, are uh, otherworldly. Uh, hearing him scream his lungs and brains out on this album is just always such a reward. And of course, the whole band is exceptionally strong. Uh, John Lord, Ian Pace, such an underrated drummer, and Roger Glover to round out the lineup. They created such a monumental uh, statement uh, to hard rock and heavy metal, and it's it, it's hard to ignore how great this uh, this piece of work was. The songs on here are all intense. They're like big boulders being dropped on your head. Um, fabulous tracks like Bloodsucker, Child in Time. Of course, the opener, Speed King, is one of the best openers on any heavy rock album. Uh, Hard Lovin' Man, I think, is one of the beginnings of speed metal, frankly, uh, the way that riff is so propulsive throughout the song. I happen to have a uh, copy on vinyl here that is, uh, it has a gatefold sleeve, and then it also has a, uh, uh, a purple record. So there we go. So those are my top five. Uh, Hope you enjoyed it. I'm interested to hear about your comments below. Uh, what would be your top five or maybe your favorite heavy metal album or what you think was the most important to uh, heavy metal? Uh, let me know. Otherwise, everyone take care and we'll see you again soon.